No, that's not a space helmet that Pope Gregory the Great, Gregory the First, is wearing, but rather a halo signifying his sanctity. Very important figure in the Catholic Church, to whom is attributed Gregorian chant. Problem. Gregorian chant is supposedly dates back to the great man himself, and yet notation really didn't evolve until about 250 years later at best, and indeed probably wasn't codified until about 400 years later. A little bird told me so. Well, that would be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Sorry, the best I can do here is uh, that stuffed alligator. Well, we know that... <laughs> We know that birds and dinosaurs were related, right? And so like many famous men, Pope Gregory was the source of attribution. He was considered so wonderful that they said, well, he must have organized the chant. There was that notion that he did organize the chant, but as to specific chants, and where were they gathered from Jewish chants, from perhaps secular tunes of the day, ongoing religious traditions, you name it. And Gregory becomes sort of the standard of Western music, or at least Gregorian chant, the standard of Western music. Shall we say it's the white bread upon which this glorious sandwich is built over the years. When I was growing up, I thought, sort of like my step-granddaughter, on her first day of school, when the teacher started holding forth, she said, boring. And I also remember going to a college get together for a hiking club and the sponsor played Gregorian chant in the background. I thought that was the weirdest thing, but I've learned over the years and possibly that experience in the monastery and my studies, but this is wonderful music. It comes to us as in a sense the soul of simplicity. What do you have? Pure monophonic music unmetered, right? there's no time signature, there's a feeling of, of pulse from the entire group moving forwards, mostly conjunct motion, it doesn't jump up and down all the time, it's very smooth by and large, and tending to be in one of four modes, which of course we shall talk about. Could some of these chants be transmitted, however, orally? for hundreds of years. Well, we've posited that in folk music and world music from hither and yon, so why not? Certainly, the structure of the Mass had been written down, and it's time to talk about the Mass. The Mass, which takes its name from the closing of the service, and it's almost a Monty Python routine in Latin, the words for you are dismissed are ite misa est. And evidently over the years, blessed are the cheesemakers, what's going on back there? Hocus pocus. The feeling was the mass is over. Ite misa est. Thanks be to God. Oh, thank goodness. Of course, there's not a whole lot to do. Maybe, at least in terms of entertainment in the Middle Ages. Sunday was pretty much given over to very long church services, and typical even of church services to the present day, you have the Mass broken down into sections that are ordinary, that happen all the time, and that are proper for only certain seasons. Who wants to sing Christmas carols at Easter? Not me. <laughs> so we do find that there's an oscillation back and forth between items in the service that are standard and items that change. This starts out with an introit. The Mass starts out with an introit. And introits, introductory passages, do change. The words change from day to day, week to week. Oh, and we have this notion of the religious, the priests and nuns would attend Mass every day, and that was part of that cycle of worship services. I once had the opportunity to stay overnight in a monastery, in of all places, 
northern Utah at a Trappist monastery. It offered its services to and its facilities for men only. Well, that's the sexism of at least back in the 1980s. A beautiful place. And yes, I got up at three in the morning or whatever to participate in matins. I could only be present in the balcony in the back of the church, but no singing. Just sit down and shut up. Don't hurt yourself. Let the priest do the service. But that was fine. And it was very moving in its own way. So, matins, right? And then we've got Lauds, Lauds it is, Lauds is the second one, then Prime, then Terse, right, third hour, nine in the morning, and from my experience, I seem to recall the Mass being at a time of when the laity would be attending a service once a week, say 10 or 11 in the morning. The Mass has its own structure, starting with an introit, which varies from service to service, but then going to the Curie. And the Kyrie is done every day in monasteries and once a week for the lay people. And the words are Kyrie Laison, Christe Laison, Kyrie Laison. Because of the Trinitarian idea in the church, you have each part repeated three times. So Kyrie Laison, Kyrie Laison, Kyrie Laison, Christe Laison, Christe Laison. Christ Laison, Kyrie Laison, Kyrie Laison, Kyrie Laison. So it's a, shall we say, a trinity of trinities. Very nice. And you're hearing this in Kyrie 4, which is a wonderful, and it's fourth Kyrie in the ordinary book, the Liber Usualis. And it is in D Dorian. And yet it starts with the A and ends with the A, so it's actually what they would call a hypo mode. And there'll be more to tell on this. Kyrie Laison. Lord have mercy, Christe laison, Christ have mercy, Kyrie laison, Lord have mercy. Much of my early music collection comes from, or some of it at least, comes from the classic historical anthology of music published by Harvard University way back in 1949. So here's Curie IV on the piano with solfege. And this may be in a slightly different tonality than what you heard in the recording. Gregorian chant often is just kind of arbitrarily sung at whatever is comfortable for the group of singers. Oh, and that group of singers. These days, the standard is to do these in a very moderate tempo, smooth, connected. But there is other evidence that this was done maybe in ornamented style, as you heard uh, some of that Greek singing of ancient Greek music. There's also a feeling that perhaps they were done rhythmically. And indeed, there is a tradition that says Gregorian chant was actually conducted by simply having a rolled up piece of sheet music and just going boom, boom, boom on the stall. They may have even done it with a stick. And certainly, Jean-Baptiste Lully, early conductor, shall we say, in the Baroque, early proponent of conducting a large group of instruments, the Quatrevin violon du bois, the 24 violins of the king, and supposedly he was banging a stick, boom, 
boom, boom, and suddenly, yeah, he hit it right on his foot and got gangrene and died. <laughs> Conducting is not for the faint of heart. And, of course, highly melismatic. Not many words. Syllabic, one note per syllable, and melismatic, many notes per syllable. So, Kyrie, syllabic so far. Then, and then another A, but this now is from a liaison rather than the Kyrie. Liaison. And that done three times. Sorry about the stain on the music. It's well loved, what can you say? Love of Christ? I don't know. All right, here it is. Uh, on the keyboard in uh, in solfege. So, so, fa, so. And notice it starts on so, it does not start on do. Do is here. It's going to outline the fifth. And we know that they love this D Dorian. Here's D Dorian. Do, re, me, fa, so, la, te, do. What's the difference for major? Do, re, me, half step here. Do, re, me, fa, so. Still have that relationship. La, that's still like major, but then bluesy. Te, do. And we have it. So, so, fa, so, te, la, so, fa, so, so, fa, me, do, re, re, fa, so, do, re, fa, me, re, me, do, do. And that done three times because Father, Son, and Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. Then the Christe. So call that A. Call this B. And it is actually pretty similar. Christe, and almost a tag on the end. And the third time, well, the third section, shall we say, goes back to the Christe. Day. And it is, you know, kind of a variant of what we started with. But it is not exact. So lyrically, it's ABA, Curie Laison, Christe Laison, Curie Laison. But musically, and this is actually not atypical of Gregorian Curies, it's expressed as A, B, and then A slash, a variant. And indeed, this one has not one, but two variants. So that you had three times with the Curie one, but when it comes back uh, for the third section, you have two statements of that, and one of that, and sounds like this. And this would be So notice at the beginning, it's quite different. You have this leap of a fifth, whereas before, so you have so do do, and this is one of the many reasons why we think of this as in Dorian. Notice the first and second phrases both cadenced on do. However, every phrase begins on so until we get here, and then we have do, so, so, fa, so, te, la, fa, la, so, te, te, so, so, la, so, fa, me, re, fa, so, so. It does not cadence on do that time. What's going on? Well, this is the example of what's known as hypodorian. And that's where you're cadencing on the dominant, on the so rather than the do. And so here is our final phrase. So it's a variant of this, and so terribly clever, right? Do, so, so, fa, so, te, la, fa, la, so, te, te, so. Pretty close to the beginning, but then a longer ending. In fact, it repeats it one more time. Do, so, so, fa, so, te, la, fa, La so te te so tag so la so fa me re fa so so man there's not a do among them then except for the first one there right drop the other shoe jazz many times does not cadence on the tonic so why should this just tastes of a couple of other versions one from a singing school in Milan first with the full chorus full choir, and then with the instructor, pretty good, given his experience, right? He should be. Then, Marvelous Version, which is our featured version, and you'll hear the chant, and then something else will happen. 
Mm-hmm. 